Welcome back to Covenant of Grace Ministries. I am Reverend Ron L. Spratley, Pastor Emeritus. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today, in our soundbite, we're going to be talking about cultivating a group economic strategy. This is something that's very important. All of the things we've been talking about this year, we talked about setting goals and objectives. We've talked about strategic relationships. We've talked about strategic partnerships. So today, we're going to look in the scripture, and we're going to be showing you how to cultivate a group economic strategy. So let's get straight into today's teaching. Our first scripture is going to come from Acts 2, 44 through 47. And all that believed, that's the key points here, all that believed were together. Now, that's a mouthful right there. Okay? That tells us what the problem is now in current religion. All right? All that believe, in this case, in the book of Acts, they were together and had all things in common. And this is beautiful. And sold their possessions and goods and parted to all men and every man that had what? Need. And they continually, daily, with what? One accord. These people were on the same page a one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house and did eat their meat with what gladness and singleness of heart. I want you to look at some of these. I, can, I gotta go back and talk about some of this. Singleness of heart and praising God and having favor with all people and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. All right, let's look at it. They believed, right? They were together. They had all things in common. They sold their possessions and goods, all right? They took care of each other. Every man that had need, all right? They continued daily with what? In one accord, one accord, all right? Breaking bread, all right? And they had what? Singleness of heart. Gladness and singleness of heart, praising God. These are attributes now and characteristics and attributes now that are no longer functioning the way they should function in the church. Group economics is a church concept that the world has taken and implemented it in a way better than the church has done because we have so much division among the church okay let's move on and then I look at acts 4 32 and 30 through 35 and the multitude of them again that believe were of what one heart together they were together one heart and of what one soul neither said any of them that out of the things which what he possessed was his own. Look at this group economics. But they had what all things common and with great power gave the apostle witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon what all of them. These people were together. Look at this. Neither was there any of them that lacked for as many as were possessors of lands and houses, sold them and brought the price of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet. And distribution was made unto every man, how? According to the need he had, according as he had need. That was the basis of making the assessment for the distribution. You're beginning to see how group economics works in the scripture. Ephesians 2 and 12. 
that all at that time you that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth. This is what I want to talk about: the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenant of the promise, having no hope and without God in the world. The key here, the commonwealth of Israel, is demonstrated in the previous two scriptures that we talked about. Let's move on. What is this concept, Pastor? You're talking about group economics. A united group of people. We just saw a united group of people that I read you from the book of Acts. A united group of people who have a common social and economic interest. That's just what I just described to you. Something today that's lost. The group agrees to activity and consciously pursue what? Economic interest to create a sustainable and secure economy for themselves. This is what we need to get back to. Commonwealth, an organized group, of independent, self-governing organization. Okay? When we organize ourselves and work together in group economics as one team, we are able to produce spiritual leverage. Positive leverage makes work easier. Let's look at some leverage ratios so you can understand I'm going to be talking about spiritual level leverage in my next teaching. Look at these leverage rate ratios. One person working, you got a one-to-one -one ratio. A day's work, a day's pay. If you got five people working, you got a five-to-one ratio. You got 10 people working, you got a 10-to-one ratio. This shows you the power that's togetherness group economics brings to us we're able to use leverage 10 of us trying to accomplish a job if we have positive leverage that's going to make the job easier than one of us trying to do it division drives you to try to do everything alone and by yourself you lose so much leverage in that situation okay you want as much positive leverage as you can get that comes from trust, people working together, understanding their assignment. Key principle, 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the what same thing, that there be what no division among you, but that ye be what perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. You came here for the truth. I have unveiled that for you. Have a blessed day till we have the opportunity to bring you another teaching in the future. God bless you.